everyone, Mike here. Welcome to another episode of MIJ Supplemental, where we dig into the finer details of vintage Japanese guitar production. Today, we're gonna look at how one of the most prominent USA-made guitar brands of the 20th century found its rebirth in Japan. Gretsch is currently celebrating its 140th anniversary as a musical instrument company, with the first Gretsch-branded guitars hitting the scene in 1928, right alongside Brill Cream and Bubblegum. And yet, for the last 30 plus years, the majority of production that has sustained the legacy of this USA brand has occurred in Japan, utilizing three factories that are all veritable heavyweights in Japan's guitar legacy, Terada, Fuji Gengaki, and Dainagaki. We have with us today two Gretsch 6120s, the guitar that has arguably remained most central to Gretsch's legacy, aside from a certain mop tops proclivities for duo jets and country gentlemen. Representing two high points of Gretsch manufacturing, we have a USA-made example from 1961 and a Japanese Terada factory example from 1989, the first year Gretsch guitars were put back into production after a sustained hiatus. So what were the circumstances that led Gretsch to cease USA production altogether and lean on Japanese manufacturing for the brand's revival? Much has been said about the Baldwin era of Gretsch production, when Fred Gretsch Jr. sold the family business to the Baldwin Piano Company in 1967, an arrangement that led to some head-scratching model decisions and the eventual cratering of the Gretsch brand by 1981. And from 1981 to 1989, Gretsch production ceased entirely, unsurprisingly, as the Japanese guitar market did time and time again throughout the 1970s and 1980s, the Gretsch-style instruments being produced in Japan filled that void, at least for a couple of years. From 1987 to 88, Greco stepped in and produced both 6120 and White Falcon-style instruments at the Fuji Gengaki factory. This was demonstrative of Greco's confidence that there was a demand for these guitars at the high price point required, given the tooling needed to replicate a guitar as relatively complex and unique as a Gretsch hollow body. And while the Gretsch family was uninvolved in these developments, it must have been a bellwether for Gretsch's future to see this mini brand revival occurring under Greco branding. By 1984, Fred Gretsch III and his wife Dinah CEO and CFO, respectively, had brought back the Gretsch brand, had bought back the Gretsch brand, oh wow. I just want to do my best for you guys. Had bought back the Gretsch brand from Baldwin. But there was no product or manufacturing facilities to speak of. And after failed talks with a few USA manufacturers, Gretsch's gaze turned east. Curiously enough, even though Fuji Gengaki was already making Gretsch-style guitars, as we've discussed, the Terada factory was chosen for this new Gretsch venture. The 6120 we have today is one of the first to be manufactured by Terada in 1989, and in both spirit and construction, it represents a return to Gretsch's roots, emblematic of the company's heritage. As any Gretsch aficionado knows, even in the heyday of USA production in the 1950s and 60s, features and tolerances were fairly wide-ranging compared to other guitar brands, right down to the Gretsch name sometimes being spelled wrong on the headstock. I am totally serious, look it up. So it'd be unfair to say, put a microscope on both of these guitars and make a binary right-wrong comparison between a USA and Japan-produced Gretsch. But, suffice it to say, that Gretsch has seen some of their very best guitars produced in Japan over the past four decades, with production expanding beyond Terada to Fujigen and Dainagaki. These guitars offer some of the finest fit and finish work and consistency and tolerances across the line that the Gretsch brand has ever enjoyed. And while Gretsch has renewed USA-based custom shop production in the past 20 years, the Japanese wing of manufacturing is still responsible for the greatest breadth of higher tiered models in the current Gretsch line, maintaining the legacy of that great Gretsch sound. For more on our Gretsch guitars and everything we have here at the Guitar Bar, Japanese made and otherwise, please check out mmguitarbar.com, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more content.
Great. Are we rolling?